Uh, how many of y'all this is the first time hearing me speak? Okay, a lot of folks. So, first of all, we like to try different areas in St. Louis to eat at. I don't know if you've all have ever been here before, uh, but it's really nice. They opened up this facility for us tonight just to be here, okay? So that's kind of a nice deal. And I apologize for the seating, but that's a good problem to have, right? A lot of people wanna, wanna come, wanna learn, wanna have some fun, have some fellowship, have some good dinner. I'll promise you this. If you will engage me for the next 25 to 30 minutes, I promise that I'll share with you tonight some information that can and will completely change your life. I promise. And the reason why I know that is because, well, this ain't my first rodeo. I, I give this lecture twice a month on different topics all over the country and all over the world. I've been blessed to do this in, in uh, the UK and, and in Spain a few times as well because I want to talk to you all about health, right? And I promise we'll have some fun tonight. I promise you'll get some great information tonight. I promise the information that you're going to hear It'll change your life, but it may also change the life of your loved ones. Hey, Crystal, can you ask them to turn that blower off if that's possible? Just for 20 minutes, okay? So here, here's, here's what we're going to talk about tonight. Normally when we get together, we talk about different topics. You know, I just did a workshop on stem cells not too long ago. We did one on thyroid not too long ago. I did one on kids with ADD, ADHD, and autism not too long ago. Tonight's workshop is called The Big Idea. And I'm going to tell you, to me, this is the most important educational piece that I can give our community. You see, doctor is Latin for teacher. That's what it means. Doctor means teacher. The unfortunate thing is, is that most doctors, well, we don't really teach our, our community anymore. How many of y'all have ever had an experience that you've had a health problem and you walk into the doctor's office and before you even, they open the door, they've got a prescription written for you for something. How many of y'all are a little bit frustrated with the way that our healthcare system is right now? How many people are sick and tired of being sick and tired? That's why I'm out here tonight to be with you. That's why I'm here to share this message with you. Do you guys know that we spend in our country, we spend on average $3 trillion a year on healthcare. Do you know that? In our country, $3 trillion a year. Now, I wouldn't have a problem with that at all. Neither would you if that gave us the absolute best results we could possibly get when it comes to health. We spend more money than the top 100 industrialized countries combined on healthcare. But yet out of the top 100 industrialized countries on the planet, do you know where we rank when it comes to health? 42nd to 48th, depending upon where you look. We have the biggest hospitals, more access to healthcare, more drugs than any country combined, but we're not healthier. And why is that? The reason why, and I'm gonna share with you tonight, is because we live in a symptom-based society, not a cause-based society. Now, I know some of you in this room are doctors, and I love it. I love when doctors come to our workshops. I think it's great. I have, you know, I have doctors and nurses and, and all kinds of different providers that work in our offices. We created this workshop and created our office out of frustration. We got tired of our patients not getting the results that they deserved. We got tired of people not being able to get out of pain. We got tired of people not being able to reverse diabetes, high blood pressure, hypertension, cholesterol, all this stuff. So tonight what I wanna do is I wanna share with you what we found over the years of helping people truly get healthy, get to the cause of their health, and really live a happy, health, healthy, blessed life like they're supposed to live. Is that fair? Okay, so I'm gonna share that with you tonight, and I'm gonna to apologize in advance. I may be baptizing some of you in the front row. Um, it's been a long day, I've already seen a couple hundred patients today, and I may spat a little bit, okay? I'll buy you dinner afterwards, okay? So, so before we talk about health, what I'd like to do is I'd like to get a definition about what health really is before we talk about it. So let's talk a little bit about that. If I say you're a healthy person or if I say I'm healthy, what, what comes to mind? What do you think about if you use the word healthy? What does it mean to you to be healthy? Young, Young okay. What, what else? Good function, what'd you say? No pain, longevity, not taking any medications. Your, your blood looks good, not taking medications, no diseases. These are all great answers, right? No pain. I know everybody wants no pain. Let me tell you something. Let me ask you a question. Is pain good or bad? It's both. Let me tell you something. Hold on. No, wait. Hold on. Don't let me lose the crowd. I just got started. Did you know there's a condition, there's a condition where, where people are born with the inability to feel pain? Did you know that? Now think about this. 
if you were, if you had a little kid, a little boy, a little girl playing on the playground and they fell off, or if they touched a hot skillet, or if they had all these things going on, that would be a problem if that person couldn't feel pain. Yes or yes? yes. So here's the deal. Pain, and we're going to talk about it in a minute, is a symptom. Pain is not your problem. The problem is in our country, we have treated pain as a symptom, as a vital sign for the last 15 years, and that has not worked out very well for us. Last year alone, alone, 60 plus thousand Americans died from overdoses of properly prescribed medications called opioids. We are, I, we're one of the, the offices in Missouri that have helped push that anti-opioid coalition, that push to help find the cause of people's problems and help people get out of pain naturally. And it's so doable to a 94% success rate if you find the cause of your problem and you fix it. So let's get back to my question about health. Health is not just how you look and how you feel. Health is how your body functions. Please understand this, okay? How many of you all know people that look good and, and felt good and dropped to have a heart attack? How many of you know people that look good and felt good and went to the doctor and left with a diagnosis of heart disease, cancer, or diabetes, or stroke? That happens all the time. Those people were sick and they didn't know it. For example, does anybody know what the first sign or symptom of most cardiovascular disease or heart attacks are? The heart attack that puts you in the hospital or the heart attack that kills you. It's crazy. Most people have no idea they're sick because they've never been truly tested. Someone a minute ago said blood levels and how your function is. That's what health really is. It's all about function, not just feeling. I want you to feel good. I want you to look good. I want you to have longevity. I want you to be able to do the things you want to do, but you've got to have a true understanding of what health is. And unfortunately, most people are not getting tested for true health. And we're going to talk about that tonight. So health is not how you look and feel. It's how you function. Now, there's three aspects of health. This is really important that you understand this, okay? There's three aspects of health that need to be measured and need to be balanced. The only way that you can have tr true function and true balance in your body is to have symmetry in these three areas. So please remember this or write this down. And I'm going to draw something. Those of you over here, you're actually the lucky ones. I'm probably the world's second worst artist on the planet, okay? Um, Dr. Nick is the first. So there's this thing. I'm drawing a triangle here. That's a triangle, okay? It's called the triad of health. I want you to understand this. By the way, this is being recorded and I will share it with all of you, okay? So you can have it. But there's three aspects of health. I don't care what symptom, sickness, or disease you have. If you have an imbalance in any of, those, any of these three areas, it's going to cause disease. Now listen, the first thing is this. Your physical health is important. Physical well-being. Physical well-being. How many of y'all have ever heard people say, uh, it's important to have your body in proper alignment. How many of you know if your car's out of alignment, that's going to cause a problem with the vehicle, right? The human body is the same thing. There are many things. Now, high blood pressure, who's ever heard of it before? Last summer, there was a huge, huge, all over the news, they showed this amazing study that shows if you don't have a normal curve in your neck, guess what happens? Your blood pressure goes up. So there's, there could be physical ailments in your body, physical anomalies, physical imbalances that cause you to have chemical and or even emotional symptomatology. And how, if, for example, well, I don't have that poster here, but your neck is supposed to be shaped like a banana, okay? That's what it's supposed to be. From the age of two until we're not on this planet anymore, it's supposed to be like a banana. Now, because of stress, trauma, imbalances because of being on our cell phones all the time, sleeping funny, we lose this curvature in our neck. And what happens is if we lose that curvature in our neck, our brain can't function like it's supposed to. If we lose that curve, things like high blood pressure, anxiety, insomnia, depression, headaches, migraines, fatigue, all these things can happen. Now, if your neck goes from this beautiful curve to this straightening of this curvature, which causes a lot of symptoms, how much Tylenol, ibuprofen, Advil, or blood pressure medication do you need to take to fix that? That's a rhetorical question because it's not going to help it. Physical problems need physical solutions. Does that make sense? So it's vitally important that you have your physical body assessed regardless of what symptomatology you have or don't have. You see, you could, you could be sick but not know it. And one of my dearest friends on the planet, his name's Chris. Chris was two-time, two-time Mr. America. This dude is jacked right? He's on the cover of Men's Health. He's all on all these magazines. He's promoting supplements and all this stuff. Chris had a big secret. Chris had Crohn's and colitis so bad that they were talking about taking three foot of his colon out, putting him on, on uh, chemotherapy uh, medications, and telling him that he's 
never going to live a normal life again. And think about this guy. This is a guy who's, you know, the epitome of health, looked amazing, felt horrible, was sick and didn't know it. So just because somebody looks fit, whatever that means, that doesn't mean they're healthy. You guys tracking me on that? Now, by the way, what Chris had found, and by the way, Chris is now a doctor because the doctor saved his life. He went to a wellness doctor uh, in Houston, Texas, and they found out that his lower back, he's supposed to have in your low back, if I looked at you straight up and down, it should be lined up. His spine had a big scoliosis curve in it. The nerves at L4 and L5 in his lumbar spine, those nerves control the, the large and small intestine. They were not working like they were supposed to. Guess what? He went and got some work done, and in three months, guess what was better? All of his symptoms were better. He didn't have Crohn's and colitis anymore, and he said, wow, God did this on purpose, so guess what? Now I gotta go back to school and do this. Now Chris has a huge practice down in Texas, and he's doing stuff like I'm doing because he's seen these things happen. The reason why I'm here tonight is I've seen miracles happen. I've seen lives change by just doing simple checks of the structure of the body. So number one, you've got to have your structure balanced, structure and alignment. And by the way, how, what are ways that you can do to assess your alignment? I mean, simple things like x-rays, right? Simple things like, here's a scary thing, but it really does work. Go home tonight or tomorrow, take a shower, make sure you're in there by yourself, clean off the mirror, take your towel off and look at yourself in the mirror. If you look like this, that ain't good. If you look like this, that ain't good, right? Like it's not hard to see if you're out of alignment. The, the, the difficult thing is to take action to do something about it, right? Because some people think, well, you know, when I was young, I was like this and now I'm getting older. That just is what happens. No, it's not. That's not normal. That's abnormal and it can be reversed. So number one is you got to have a balance in your physical health. Does that make sense? Number two, this is super important. Your chemistry. Chemistry is so important. Now you can have physical pain in your body because joints are out of alignment. You've got arthritis. You've got all this stuff going on. But you can also have chemical pain in your body. Now how many of y'all know that, that we're supposed to eat food because it's fuel, right? Like there's nutrients in that to keep us alive. If you don't have the right gas in the gas tank, the car can't run like it's supposed to. Would you all agree with that? The same thing's true with the body. We can have chemical pain in our body, chemical symptoms in our body because we don't have the right nutrients in or also because we have too many toxins in our body that need to come out. Did you all know that? We live in a very toxic world. The air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, these things all have toxins in them. We can't avoid all that stuff. So it's important to make sure that your nutrients are balanced proper so that your body doesn't have these problems. Does that make sense? Now, let me ask you this. How many of you in this room, show of hands, take some type of a vitamin? Okay, that's a lot of people. It's a multi-billion dollar a year industry. How many of you in this room know that you're taking the exact right vitamin for you? You probably do. How come you know? Because I told you, that's right, I know. That's what you're supposed to say. <laughs> we have a rule in our offices. It's real simple. Physiology doesn't lie. We test, we don't guess. We test, we don't guess. There's a real simple blood test, a real simple saliva swab test that we can do in our offices to find out what vitamins, minerals, and nutrients you specifically need as an individual for you to be healthy. There may be 100 people in this room that all have the same symptoms, but there may all be 100 different nutritional deficiencies. Does that make sense? The only way to know is to test. And please don't get offended by this when I say this, but most of your doctors know diddly jack squat about nutrition because they're not educated on it. Now, that, I'm not asking for applause on that. You can applaud later. Um, but, but the truth is this. The average physician only gets five to six hours of nutritional education during their whole career and learning how to help the human body. That's not okay. In, 19, in the 1980s, anybody remember the 80s? <laughs> you get, some of you trying to forget it? Okay. Do you remember the Surgeon General back in the 80s? The guy with the chin strap beard, C. Everett Koop? C. Everett Koop and the FDA and the CDC in the 1980s did an amazing study. It was a five-year study. What they found out was that 80%, 80% of chronic degenerative diseases is caused by nutritional imbalances or lifestyle issues. Well, hell, if 80% of them are caused by that, why are we not testing that? Why are we not correcting that? Because they're not educated on it. And there's a book that I read often on Sundays, and it says, without knowledge, my people will perish. So if you don't know what's going to kill you, it's going to kill you. So it's important to have your chemistry tested proper. And I don't mean going once a year and getting a, a 
cholesterol test and a, and a CBC. I'm talking about looking at vitamins, minerals, hormones, nutrients. We can actually measure your cells and find out if you have a predisposition for heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, a wellness panel, because that's what we are as wellness team. Does that make sense? So it's important to know your chemical well-being as well. And last but not least, and this, in my opinion, is the most important because I see the biggest results with this and I see the biggest problems with this is knowing how your nerves work. Now, do you guys remember in school we talked about there were all these different systems in the body, right? You got digestive system, you got a reproductive system, you got a integumentary system. You remember all those systems? They're all controlled by one system in the body. Does anybody know what that is? The nervous system. Your brain and your spinal cord control everything. Your brain tells your heart to pump, your lungs to breathe, your bowels to move, your legs to work. It tells it to do what it's supposed to do. If you have an injury in your nerves, which is so common, so common, it causes a problem in the signaling and can cause problems in the muscles and in the organs. Does that make sense? Now, I'm going to show you something. This is a poster, and I'll leave it up here so you all can take a picture of it because I want you to take a picture of this. This is a very powerful poster. We created this. We literally run our practices off of these three posters that are up here. There's so much information on here, it's not even funny. I'm going to teach you something. The way the body works is the brain lives up here. It sends electrical signals down the spinal column. It's like a giant fuse box. You all know a fuse box at home, right? If you go home tonight and you flip the lights on in your house and the lights don't turn on, as long as the bulbs are good and the bills are paid, you're probably going to go where to see if there's a problem? The fuse box. Well, your spine is the breaker box, fuse box of your body. But most people don't know that. You see, all these different nerves go to different areas of the body and then to different organs. I just did a workshop not too long ago, and we were talking about the thyroid. By the way, anyone here has thyroid problems, thyroid is not a primary problem. It's a secondary problem. Usually there's a problem with the nerves, the liver, or the adrenal glands. And a lot of times we'll find a lot of people will have neck issues that have thyroid problems. Why is that? Well, rocket science tells us, which is common sense, tells us the nerves in the neck the control of the thyroid might be causing the problem. So what I want you all to do later on, I'm gonna leave this up here, take a picture of all these symptoms that can come up of these different nerves that are bad. And that way you can go, oh, that might be the cause of my problem. Does that make sense? It's super important to understand your nerve function and it's even more important to understand your brain function. So I wanna explain one more last thing about the neurology. This is super important. And then I'll get into a few more things. Your brain. Do you all remember uh, when we were kids, teeter-totters or seesaws or whatever they're called now, right? So think about your brain. You have a left side and a right side. And this is so powerful to understand this. I mean, once I learned this, it really helped us open up the, really the floodgates for helping people get healthy. Because this, in my opinion, and the opinion of most doctors, is the number one cause of all sickness and disease. When you have an imbalance in the left and right side of your brain. Now, this poster right here illustrates that. If you look, on, this side, of your, on your, this side of your brain is a part of the brain called the, par- the sympathetic nervous system. It's the gas pedal. It's the go, go, go part of your brain. On the other side, this is called the parasympathetic. We call it the brake pedal. This is the part of your brain that allows you to rest, relax, grow, develop, heal, digest, immune function, you name it. If this part of your brain isn't firing like it's supposed to, none of that stuff is possible. You can't heal. You can't get rid of your symptoms. You can't get rid of your pain. You can't lose weight. You can't sleep. All the things that people deal with. And all these symptoms down at the bottom are possible for you. But this part of your brain right here is what most people are stuck in. Most people's gas pedal is stuck on go because of one word, stress. Y'all ever heard of stress before? It's a new thing. It was just on CNN this morning, okay? Stress. Stress is the number one killer of all men and women on the planet. The truth is the inability to adapt to stress is the number one killer of all men and women on the planet. So think about your brain. You got that left side, you got that right side. You got your gas pedal and your brake pedal. Most of us are too high on the gas. When one side of the teeter-totter goes up, what happens to the other side? It goes down. Now, let me tell you guys something about stress. And this is in Guyton's physiology textbook. This is the textbook that every healthcare provider has to buy for 200 bucks and study out of, which is worth every penny of it, by the way. But here's the deal. It says that you cannot be in stress and healing at the same time. It's impossible. It's impossible. How many of you have ever been really sick before? You ever had really bad flu, really bad whatever? Or how many of you have ever had a really bad injury? You, just, you, got, you broke something, you hurt something. What's your body want to do? It wants to shut down. It wants to sleep. It wants to relax. It wants to hibernate so that it can heal. It wants to go in that parasympathetic activity. 
So here's the thing about stress. Do you all know how much stress our body is designed to be under? So here's, here's the thing. Our body is designed to be under stress no more than 15 minutes at a time, three to four times a week. Anybody in this room under stress more than 50 minutes at a time, three to four times a week? Raise both your hands. If you can't raise your hands, it means your shoulders are broken, okay? I need you to understand this is the key. We have found that stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system is the absolute key to getting balance to your body. It's called homeostasis. Now think about the left and right side of your brain like muscles. If, if I had a problem with this muscle here, how would I get it stronger? I would have to exercise it and use it. There are certain activities, exercises, modalities, and nutrients that you can take specifically for you to stimulate that parasympathetic nervous system. That's what every one of you needs to find out because what you need may be different than you and then you and then you. Everyone's need is different. But it goes back to the phrase that I said a moment ago, we don't guess, we test. Does that make sense? So there are all kinds of tests that can be done. Heart rate variability tests to measure brain activity, x-rays to look at structure, uh, lab tests that can be done to look at DNA that can look at chemistry and look at uh, hormones and vitamins and nutrients to see what you specifically need to take and how to take them. And that's what we've created to help people truly get healthy. Everybody tracking me so far? This good so far? You good? Okay. Now I want to explain one more thing and then I'll shut up and we can eat. So I want to tell you something, how the body works. This is really, really important. By the way, you have to have a balance in stress and we're going to talk about that in just a second. But here's how the body works. So, so this cost me about $250,000 to learn and you know, six years of medical training. I'm going to teach it to you in about 30 seconds, okay? Go out and practice tomorrow. You'll be fine. <laughs> just buy some scrubs. I just bought these at Scrubs and Beyond. It's just a piece of cake. You're good. So, so here's how the body works. The brain lives up here in the skull. I'll leave this up here so you all can see it. The bottom part down here is your body. Now, this is how it works. It's really just this simple. We don't need to overcomplicate this. The brain sends signals electrically down to the body. The body then sends signals electrically to the brain. That's the closed loop circuit, how the body works. L let me give you an example. In a moment, we're all going to eat food and it's going to be really good food. Okay. It's not the healthiest stuff, but it's good every once in a while to eat some good soul food. Right. But now listen to me. When you eat, you don't have to think about digesting that food, do you? You don't have to think about, okay, it's been five minutes since I've swallowed that. Stomach produced some hydrochloric acid. Uh, liver makes some enzymes. You don't have to think that through. It just happens because of your nervous system. It just does it, right? Now, here's what happens. If we have a stressor, if we have a stress in our body, what happens is, first of all, when you have a, a complete circuit and it's looping like it's supposed to, that's 100% function. That's good function, okay? If you get some interference in this nerve, which is caused by stress, stress. Anybody in here have stress? You ladies in the back back there got some stress going on? Okay. All right. So look, stress. Just hear me. I'm almost done. I'm going to feed you in a minute. We don't feed if you're talking though. I'm just playing. <laughs> stress. S-T-R-E-S-S. -S -S. Now watch this. What causes stress? <laughs> Tell me, go ahead, just let me hear it. Kids, what else? Life, my husband, this is, something's going on over here. I'm Dr. Eric, not Dr. Phil, okay? But here's what I'm gonna tell you. Now just hear me on this, just hear me. What causes stress is, is, is life. There's three things, physical, chemical, and emotional stress. My kids, my husband, my spouse, my wife, my, that's all an emotional stress. There's physical stresses of sitting all day because you work. There's physical stresses of, of being on your phone all day. There's physical stresses of falling. There's physical stresses of, of, of playing sports. There's physical stresses of being born or of having a baby. Physical stress is constantly in our life, constantly. You cannot avoid it. You cannot avoid physical stress. So there's physical stress, emotional stress. And the third one is chemical. Not eating the right foods, you know, not, not having the toxins come out of your body. That's a stressor. But here's the deal. Now track me on this. There's three causes of stress. Thoughts, traumas, toxins. That's what I just said. What happens is when our nerves get messed up, when we get under stress, something happens in our nervous system. You know, doctors, we do a really good job uh, making really fancy words so that we sound really smart. So, you know, like, you ever go to a doctor and hear the word idiopathic? 
Like you have idiopathic hypertension. You know what that means? We don't know the cause of it. Pay your copay. You know what I mean? It's like, what? But it's true, right? We use a lot of Latin words to explain things. There's a Latin phrase, a word I'm going to share with you that's important. It's really powerful if you understand it. Remember this word. It's called subluxation. Subluxation. When we get under stress, our nerves become subluxated. So I'll write it down. Subluxation. Now listen, let's break that down. What does the word sub mean? Less than or under. So less than. Anybody know what the Latin word for lux is? Life. 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 So if your nerves are stressed out, you are less than life. What that means is you have less function of your life. Because when you're under stress, physically, chemically, or emotionally, when you have subluxation, that causes your body not to work and operate like it's supposed to. Are you all tracking me on that? Yeah. Now, what happens when we have subluxation in our body, when we have stress in our nervous system? We get something called a symptom. I'm going to use the stomach as an analogy, okay? By the way, just so you all know, the nerve at T5 and C5 in the neck, 5, 6, and 7, control the stomach. If we have nerve irritation or subluxation at that nerve level, the stomach can't work like it's supposed to. What are some of the symptoms that we may have with stomach problems? Reflex, what else? Gas, bloating, heartburn. Like it's that Pepto-Bismol commercial, right? The diarrhea, constipation, it is. But listen, but here's the deal. The medical term for a symptom is an SX. SX is symptom. Now, anybody ever watch television? Every third commercial on TV is a drug commercial. Pay attention to the last 20 seconds of every drug commercial. What's on it? What's it talk about? Yeah, you're gonna, your, your gas is going away. But you might, your eyeball's gonna fall out, you're gonna grow a third nipple. That's okay, we got a drug for that. Now listen, every drug, every drug has a minimum of three, three side effects. Now look, so now if I have a stomach ache, I take, I have a symptom, I'm gonna take an RX, which is a drug. Now I got three more symptoms because of that medication. Now I got another symptom, another symptom, another symptom. Now what do I gotta do? More drug, more drug, more drug, more drug. The average American is on seven medications. Did you know that? Seven. There's a lot of people that are on 30. Now, let me tell you one more thing. I, I'm not, you guys, I'm not bashing medicine because we practice medicine in my office. We practice functional medicine, which is finding the cause of it. But now listen, this is important. Did you know that, that we've done studies, the FDA, the, the, the scientists of the world have done studies on your medications. We've done studies to find out, is blood pressure okay for, medication okay for you? What, what side effects does it have? We've done those studies. There has never, ever, ever in the history of the world been a study done with two medications combined, let alone five, let alone seven, let alone 30. Which like, for example, most people that are on high blood pressure medication are on high cholesterol medication. There has never, ever, ever been a study that has shown that that is safe to take those two medications together. Never, never, ever, ever. There's never been a study that's shown taking a Vicodin or an Oxycontin with any other medication is safe and effective. In fact, we're leading to think that that's part of the reason why people get hooked on opioids. So what I'm trying to say is, this is the model that most of us are used to. Symptom drug, symptom drug, symptom drug. What we do, because we're pretty commonsensical people, we say, all right, that doesn't make sense. I wanna help find the cause of the problem. What's, what's the cause of this? We know that subluxation is the cause. There's no drug that fixes that because it's caused by either emotional stress, physical stress, or chemical stress. You tracking me on that? So what we do, myself, Dr. Nick, all of our team members, we go, all right, cool, here's the deal. Let's just go ahead and remove this stressor. Let's fix the cause of the problem and give the body time to heal. And guess what happens? Over time, these symptoms go away. And guess what people don't need anymore? Medications. That's a fact. We see it every day, every stinking day. But you have to put in the work. Does that make sense? Do you understand how simple this is? That's what we do at our wellness centers is find the cause of a problem. Now, I want to share three more things with you, then I'm going to shut up, I promise. Now, there's three principles of health I need you to understand. Number one is this, healing takes time. Now, did you know, rule of thumb, physiology speaking, if you have a problem, let's say you've had a problem for five months, 10 months, I'm sorry, uh, 10 years, five years, three years, or whatever, however many years you've had a problem, it's going to take that many months, like if it's 10 years, it takes about 10 months for your physiology to start breaking up that old wiring and firing program. How many of you have ever joined a gym to go work out? 
and you went like, you know, once, twice, three, five times, and you're like, this ain't working. I want my money back. That's because it takes time to change. Y'all know that, but most people don't commit to it. Healing takes time. It takes about <laughs> three months for the body to make a big physiological change. It takes about six months for that change to become permanent, which is why when we do our weight loss programs and we do all of our, we always tell folks, you got to commit to 90 days. Then you got to commit to six months. Why? Because people that do that, it stays off forever. They don't do this yo-yo crap that kills people, right? And then it takes about 12 months for your body's epigenetics to start making some big changes as well, okay? So number one is healing takes time. So don't go out and buy some Vita Vita Vegemins and throw them away because they don't work tomorrow. <laughs> Because most of you have been jacked up for a long time, right? Number two is this. So healing takes time. Number two, it is a process. Just remember this, or a process. Okay, it's a process to heal. When you have problems, your body accommodates. Like, how many of you have ever had a bad knee before? Your knee goes bad, next thing you know, now you're walking funny. Now your hip's off, your shoulder's off, your neck's off. Well, Doc, when I first came in, I wanted my knee fixed. Now my back hurts, my shoulder hurts. It's because you've got to retrace your body's neurology. Healing takes time, and it's a process. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, the third thing and most important thing to understand, who is responsible for your health? Yeah. You, no, you are. <laughs> Just because you pay me don't mean I'm responsible for it. You are. But listen, here, here's, here's, here's the deal. You know this. What are we going to do? I'll give you the map, the keys, and the car, but you still got to drive it. It's just like if you're thirsty and I'm holding this water out here and you go, Doc, I'm so thirsty. I'm so thirsty. I'm like, here's your water. Drink it. But this is one thing I want you to understand, and I mean this with all due love and respect to all of you in this room. Sick people do sick things. What I mean by that is we're patterned and programmed. Your, your pain is patterned and programmed. It's been that way. If you're a diabetic or you're overweight, it's because you've been that way for a while. It's going to take some consistency to make a change. And one thing that I've found bigger than anything on the planet is if the reason why is big enough, the how to do it is a piece of cake. But you've got to have a big reason why. And don't make that reason why because you just got out of the hospital. You got a quadruple bypass. Don't make that reason why because they're talking about amputating your feet because you're diabetic. Don't make that reason why, because everybody in your family has died at the age of 40 and you're now 41 and you're, you know, oh, what am I going to do now? Make the reason why be, be why for you. Is it because you want to have an abundant life? You want to be able to enjoy your kids, your grandkids, your spouse, your life? You want to you be able to do these things? Now, how many of y'all know this? This is the last thing I'll talk about. How many of you know the number one cause of bankruptcy in the United States is healthcare costs? Did you know that? 50% of all bankruptcy in the United States is because of healthcare costs. And did you know that 80% of those people had insurance? Quote unquote, great insurance? There ain't no such thing. Insurance is there in case stuff real bad happens. Guess what they don't care about? They don't care about you getting healthy. Medicare guidelines just came out. I put it on my social media page a couple months ago. Here's the Medicare guideline, which all insurance is governed by. They will not cover anything that is to prevent disease, reverse disease, or prolong quality of a healthy life and wellness care. It is set up for symptom-based care only. Drugs and surgery, that's what it's for. No offense to any of you that sell insurance, that's just what it's for. It's way less expensive to live a wellness lifestyle than it is to try to treat your cancer or your surgery or whatever that may be. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, how many of y'all enjoyed this? Is it good so far? Okay, so how many of you know people that should have probably been here tonight to hear this? So, good. So, so first of all, I appreciate you guys for coming. It's important for me to be able to share this information with our community. You know, normally we talk about conditions and symptoms and problems and all this kind of stuff, and, and that's good to talk about that because that's what most people wanna to go to a doctor for, right? is to find out what's the cause of their problem or what can you do for my pain or whatever that may be. And I just had, and I guess I threw it away, but I had a, on your table, there's a survey. And if you didn't get one, we'll give you one. Here's what I'm asking for you to do for me and I'm gonna do something for you. I want every one of you to fill out one of those surveys. It's a symptom survey. Yeah, that thing right there. Yeah, I'm not gonna call you, we're not gonna solicit you. We don't do that stuff. Y'all ever been to our offices? We're already too crazy busy, it's not even funny. 
But the reason why we're crazy busy is because we know what we're doing. We help people. Where a lot of other people don't. But if you all want some help, I'll give you that opportunity. Fill out that survey. Check those boxes that say, these are symptoms I've had in the last 6 to 12 months. That means your check engine light's going off in your car. So listen, I just want to say thank you all so much for coming tonight. We'll hang out and answer some questions. Uh, my team is here to help. We have a lot of our current patients that are here. They'll answer any questions. If there's ever anything I can do to help you or your family, please let us know. Check that box. And if you have friends or family members that, that aren't here that want to come to that, then do that. Fair? All right. Thank you guys so much for coming. I appreciate you all so much. They're going to come over in just a second. The, the staff here, the team here uh, that, that works here at, at the restaurant and uh, dismiss us by table to go to the buffet. The food is amazing. Okay, so please enjoy that. And then you can sit wherever you like. We'll turn the music on, have some fun, and we'll answer some questions, okay? Thank you all so much for coming. Enjoy your dinner tonight. Thank you all. Yes.